Hi, this is the third movie in Chapter 3. Um, this slide's about notes on drawing sheets and abbreviations. Okay, so typically there's a bunch of notes that are on the drawing, okay? Um, and we either put those on the right or left margin of the first sheet. There's a common location for a notes list. And it's headed by the word notes, and they're numbered consecut consecutively. Note 1, Note 2, Note 3, Note 4. And you can use abbreviation for common terms to reduce the space needed on your drawings. And then ASME 14.38 tells you about that. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about fits right now. Okay, so when you have two parts that go together, like a, a hole and a shaft. So a shaft, like a, like a hull in a hub, for instance. And then a rotating shaft. And that hub would mount on that rotating shaft. Um, when we're talking about the fits, okay, so there's tolerance on the hole and there's tolerance on the shaft too. So if we would look at taking the hole size and subtract the shaft size, then you get how much clearance there is between the, the, the hole and the shaft. Okay, so clearance is when an internal part is smaller than the mating external part. Okay, and when we say clearance fit is smaller part than mating, I'm talking in all tolerance conditions. Okay, not just, the, you know, when the hole is at its maximum, you know, does the shaft go into the hole with a clearance fit. The, hole, the shaft will go into the hole with a clearance fit regardless of the tolerance of the, of, of the individual parts because it's designed to fit a certain way. Where an interference fit, for instance, is the external, the internal part is larger than the external part. Hey, so the shaft is bigger than the hole. You know, in some cases that's desirable. So that's the difference between a clearance and an interference fit. Um, an interference fit and a clearance fit, in both cases, it has to do with um, under all tolerance conditions. Now, if you had a transition fit, on the other hand, um, you could have a tolerance condition that says, hey, well, you know, in some cases it's going to be clearance between the hole and the shaft. And then, you know, depending on where these parts fall in their tolerance range, uh, it could be interference too. That, that's called a transition fit. Um, in other classes, we had you guys calculating um, f fits based on the ANSI B4.1 standard. We did that work in drawings. We did that in machine design as well, but um, we're not going to do that in this case. case. In this class, we're just going to talk about um, clearance versus interference fits as part of your terms, and then a transition fit as part of your terms. Here's another one. Um, it's called a line fit. And, and really, so it's not a class of fit, it's just there's zero allowance between the mating parts. That, that means if the hole is at its smallest and the shaft is at its biggest, those parts have the same dimension. Okay, so that's called a line fit or a line-to-line -line fit. Um, again, would be very difficult to assemble a line-to-line -line fit, especially if they were close to those um, um, maximum material conditions it would be very difficult to assemble because um, there is no minimum clearance. Um, next, we want to talk about basic dimensions. That's the theoretical um, exact dimension. Uh, we talked about that in the last lecture. and That was really the, um, it, it's the size or location dimension that doesn't have a tolerance. It doesn't have a tolerance because the feature control frame somewhere on the drawing tells you what the tolerance is for that feature. It's a um, dimension that's used in GD&T. And we do that by putting a rectangle around it. And then here's another picture of a feature control frame. Um, talk a little bit about material conditions. RFS is regardless of feature size. MMC is at the maximum material condition. LMC is at the least material condition. And again, those are if those are specified within the tolerance portion of the feature control frame. If the mod like like this one, so there's a modifier within the tolerance block. Um, if the modifier appears over here in the data and reference area, it's called material boundary, regardless of material boundary when no modifiers are shown. And then maximum material boundary, if um, the M modifier is shown, if the L modifier is shown, that's the least um, material boundary. 
Um, block tolerances. Okay, so your author now is saying that block tolerances should not be used for location dimensions. I think it's going to take a while for industries to catch up because I think everybody does rely on the block tolerances. Where I work, the block tolerance is typically plus or minus five thousandths, which, you know, is adequate for a lot of cases. But in some cases, you're going to need a tighter tolerance than that. And then in other cases, you, you should be able to provide more tolerance than the plus or minus five. Um, so it, it's a general theme of this course and, and the author. It's like all tolerances need to be calculated. Don't rely on block tolerances just for defaults, you know, just so you don't have to calculate it. Because um, that's just... Um, it's just bad practice. The other thing the author says is chain dimensions should be a past practice. Application of chain, dim chain dimensions in combination with plus or minus tolerances for locations. What what happens when when you when you do this is you end up with um, um, an accumulation of tolerances, you know, and, and, and it's probably not good. So the author doesn't like um, chain dimensioning. Um, there's another thing about baseline dimensioning. I, th I think baseline is a lot of cases if it's executed properly is good. But, you know, he's talking about ambiguous origin and direction of measurements when the origin features have form or orientation variation. Um, yeah, you really need to use GD and T. I mean, because GD and T takes out all of the ambiguity. Um, if you're just using baseline dimensions with tolerances, uh, straight plus or minus tolerances, that's kind of bad. But if you use GD and T, it takes away a lot of the ambiguity. Um, and there's one more here. Application of plus line tolerances on basic dimensions for location should be discontinued. It's ambiguous and does not explain all possible variations. So again, that's a, it, it's a proponent of using the GD and T because GD and T will establish a reference frame for your parts and, and it'll remove all ambiguities in, in the inspection processes. So this is the last movie for, for chapter three. Thank you.